Um, thank you very much to the organizer for giving me this opportunity to present here. Um, I'm Giovanni Pelliccioli from uh, Würzburg University. And in this talk, I will uh, speak about polarized uh, mass inductor bosons at the LHC. This is the outline of my talk. I will briefly motivate why it is so interesting to um, uh, investigate weak bosons uh, at the LHC. Uh, then I will uh, um, sketch uh, the basic uh, uh, tools, so the, the most important issues that uh, appear when trying to define uh, a polarized signal at the theoretical level in a Monte Carlo code. Uh, afterwards, I will um, present very few uh, results that we obtained for diboson production and uh, vector boson scattering processes. Uh, this will lead to my um, conclusions. Okay, uh, why is it so interesting to investigate polarized weak boson? Um, at the LHC, the accumulated luminosities in the last uh, run, um, which is run two, uh, at 13 TV central mass energy, and uh, the luminosities which are foreseen for the next uh, two runs, which will increase up to uh, 3,000 uh, in the Svantobar in the high lumi, uh, will allow for um, very precise measurement of electric processes which involve the propagation of several um, weak bosons. Um, Polarization observables represent a class of observables which are highly non-trivial to extract from, from the data because uh, basically um, because the, the, the weak bosons are unstable particles. So the only way we have to um, know something about their uh, polarization mode is to um, uh, investigate on um, the, um, the decay products. In particular, the angular uh, dependence of some differential distributions uh, for the, la the uh, decay products of the weak bosons. Uh, these observables could be um, and are for sure important probes for the standard model itself uh, and in particular for the gauge and Higgs sector of the standard model, but they in principle could provide also some um, uh, discrimination power between the standard model and new physics effects, so beyond uh, standard model um, theories. Uh, Atlas recently measured uh, the polarization of uh, uh, W and Z boson in uh, um, boson pair production uh, last year. Um, and more measurements are expected um, both in boson pair production and in vector boson scattering. Um, why uh, vector boson scattering? Vector boson scattering is, let's say, the golden plated process for these searches because it has a crucial role in. Um, uh, in the polarization structure. Um, if one considers uh, on-shell vector bosons uh, with longitudinal uh, polarization mode, uh, already at three level, uh, we have two uh, different contributions. One which is pure gauge, which is constituted by the three diagrams which I depict in figure on the left, uh, and one Higgs propagating uh, diagram. Um, in the large um, central mass energy uh, regime, uh, the pure gauge contribution uh, they, um, grows badly with the energy of the center of mass. Uh, and so it is needed to have the Higgs propagation in the last diagram to recover unitarity in this, uh, in this limit. Uh, so this is to say that the longitudinal procession uh, has a strong dependence uh, on the electric symmetry breaking, which is responsible of giving the longitudinal polarization to W and Z bosons. Uh, and in, if new physics is present, uh, so far we have not uh, seen it, but it could be uh, present. Uh, if new physics is present uh, at the LHC, uh, it could interfere with the standard model, and in particular, it could interfere in this delicate balance between uh, large uh, uh, contribution cancellation uh, and push the restoration of the unitarity to higher values uh, above the cascade. Um, this, this motivates uh, the, the importance of VBS, uh, vector boson scattering, for the search for beyond standard model uh, effects. Uh, of course, we need to give uh, accurate predictions from the theoretical side to the experimentalist in order to have a reasonable com comparison uh, against the, the LHC data. Uh, just to give you a feeling of what vector boson scattering is, it is a topology in which one basically picks up uh, two quarks uh, from the colliding protons at the LHC. Um, in red, li red lines are quarks. Uh, these quarks um, um, radiate uh, weak boson 
and then uh, hit the detector in the forward backward region. And these two ports uh, form uh, a system with large invariant mass and rapidity separation, of course. Uh, the radiated weak boson uh, interact and then in the end decay into the usual uh, either leptonic or hadronic uh, decay products. Okay, let me go through the, mm, mm, the basic uh, tools that are needed in order to define a polarized signal uh, in multi-boson processes uh, at the LHC. Uh, let's consider uh, for simplicity a process like the one depicted in figure in uh, top left figure uh, in which we have uh, several particles uh, and one resonant uh, vector boson, which I label V. Uh, this boson is produced, propagates, and then decays into leptons for simplicity, massless leptons. Um, the corresponding unpolarized amplitude can be factorized into production, propagation, and decay uh, subamplitudes. Uh, the propagator uh, in the unitary gauge, but this holds in any RxC gauge. Um, the numerator of this propagator can be written as a sum of term, one per each polarization, plus an additional auxiliary polarization state, which, however, um, vanishes when contracted with uh, a massless lepton uh, current in the, in the, in the decay part. Um, so the, the, the basic idea is that if one selects just one of these um, terms, is selecting a specifically polarized amplitude. At the level of cross-section, so to say at the level uh, of squared uh, amplitude, the uh, unpolarized squared amplitude gives a sum over these uh, three polarized cross-sections, uh, one for the longitudinal state, one for the left, and one for the right, plus um, the so-called uh, off-diagonal spin matrix terms, which are the also called interference term, which are the interferences between different polarization states, which in general are non-zero. Uh, ju just know that the polarization vectors uh, in this construction are not transforming as Lorentz vectors. So once we decide to define the polarizations in a specific frame at the LHC, that's it, and we have to compute everything in that, in that frame in order to be coherent. Um, as I already said, uh, the um, decay lepton uh, distributions, and in particular the angles of the decay lepton in the corresponding uh, vector boson rest frame, um, uh, reflect the polarization mode of the uh, W or Z boson. And in particular, I'm not showing uh, it here, but there is an analytic expression for the decay rate with respect to uh, the angles of the, of the lepton. Uh, which holds for leading order um, decay uh, in the electric theory, but also for an LQCD, for example. However, this ex analytic expression um, is um, valid only in the absence of lepton cuts. Lepton cuts, I mean uh, uh, acceptance cut, for example, a minimum cut on the lepton PT uh, or the lepton transfer momentum or uh, a maximal uh, um, rapidity for the leptons. Um, this analytic expression allows uh, us to validate a Monte Carlo definition for the polarized signals uh, against these uh, the analytic results, which can be directly extracted from the unpolarized uh, simulations. However, in the presence of uh, basic lepton cuts, which is always the case in a realistic environment at the LHC, um, this analytic expression doesn't hold anymore because basically the interferences, which are uh, shown in this term, uh, don't vanish uh, anymore. Um, so th this means that in the presence of lepton cuts, the only tool that we can uh, uh, use for uh, describing polarized spectral bosons is uh, uh, defining the polarized signal directly in a Monte Carlo. Uh, there is a further bottleneck, which is not all diagrams uh, contributing to multiboson topologies uh, are uh, resonant as the one which was depicted in the uh, slide before. And already in, the, in a boson pair production, uh, like these two diagrams, which are the leading order contribution to W plus W minus production in the fluid electronic decay channel, uh, already for this, for this process, we have that this diagram features two resonances, while these diagrams feature only one W resonances. For this diagram, the W plus polarization uh, cannot be disentangled. We cannot talk about the polarization of the W plus in this case. So the only way we, um, we can go is select just W resonant uh, diagrams, or more in general, resonant diagrams, uh, which, however, has the bad behavior of uh, um, 
making one loose gauge invariance, and this is uh, bad news, of course. So we need a recipe to recover electroweak SU2 times U1 gauge invariance somehow um, in this selection of resonant uh, diagrams. So the, the rationale is the only truth is, of course, the full computation, which is unpolarized, of course, uh, and separating a uh, resonant contribution in the specific double resonant contribution is uh, really delicate. Uh, there are several strategies to do so. Uh, the one we use uh, is the so-called double pole approximation, uh, which uh, amounts at projecting on shell the vector bosons just in the numerator of the uh, amplitude, retaining uh, the off-shell effects by uh, the modulation of the uh, bright Ebinger uh, from the off-shell kinematics. Uh, this is perfectly gauge invariant, and in uh, many cases works really good, both in lay boson and in vector boson scattering, has been proved uh, a lot. Uh, then, once we have resonant contributions treated in a gauge invariant way, uh, we know how to reproduce the full computation with only um, resonant diagrams, and then separating polarization is straightforward because we have the topology which I showed you before, so this factorized uh, structure. So far, I talked only about leading order electroweak for the boson or vector boson scattering of other multi boson processes, but since we consider only leptonic uh, decays for the uh, weak bosons, um, going beyond leading order and in particular uh, going towards analog QCD uh, is in principle really easy because the radiative correction in the strong coupling only touch the initial state. So there is only initial state radiation concerning QCD corrections. However, it is not so straightforward because, uh, as you probably uh, know, uh, in, when one, in any NLO computation, NLO QCD computation, one has to deal with the infrared singularities uh, because there are um, bone contribution and virtual contribution as well as real contribution, which are all needed to ensure the infrared safety of the um, of the final NLO uh, cross-section or observable in general. Um, practically, what one does uh, is to uh, devise a subtraction scheme uh, like the Catani Seymour, like NLO QCD, um, which amounts at adding a subtracting a counter term which mimics uh, in the n plus one body phase space um, uh, the, the phase space singularities of the real contributions and reproduces the explicit singularities when integrated over the radiation of virtual origin. This um, general uh, uh, scheme, uh, this general uh, um, procedure is called subtraction of infrared uh, singularities. Um, since we need for our for our uh, purposes to uh, use double pole approximation and to separate the polarization, we need to do this for all of these five pieces of the computation. So we need to project on shell the boson since all of these pieces participating into the computation at NLO QCD, which can be not trivial due to, for example, the kinematic mappings that are needed in the uh, subtraction counter term. But this can be done, we did it, and we also separated polarizations uh, for all of the parts of the contribution in order to be coherent with the Born uh, leading order uh, um, uh, predictions. Uh, we implemented it in Mokallo, uh, which is a, a private um, program here in Würzburg, which takes uh, uh, metric elements coming from a Recola program. Uh, we completed the implementation for any uh, color singlet final state. So, for example, diboson, which is depicted here. So, boson pair in the fully leptonic decay. Uh, but we are also close to um, completing the implementation for processes with feature uh, additional jet in the final state. And then electroweak is another story because uh, um, it, it, it seems to be much more involved to define polarizations and in general to separate resonant structure uh, when doing an electroic since both the virtual and real contribution will participate in the computation mix the production and the case of amplitude. So uh, separating polarization there is highly non uh, I now just sketch very few results that we obtained um, in vector boson scattering and diboson. I start with um, some results in VBS which we obtained with the um, the Torino group uh, in the last years, um, we did um, investigate all of the possible VBS channels at leading order electroweak, which is the so-called 
VBS signal uh, in experimental terms, let's say, as opposed to the QCD background. Uh, of course, in the fully leptonic uh, final state, and we consider only opposite flavors uh, in order to uh, avoid additional complications due to um, identical particles. Um, here I will consider um, as an example just WZ uh, scattering, uh, which means uh, two jets in the final state plus uh, three charged leptons and uh, missing PT, so a neutrino, which cannot be reconstructed at the other side. Uh, this is, mm, from my point of view, the, um, the most interesting uh, DBS channel because it features a reasonable uh, cross-section, which can be uh, measured at the other side, it has been measured already in the unpolarized case. Uh, and uh, can be entire, almost entirely reconstructed thanks to not, um, neutrino reconstruction technique. Um, the results which obtained uh, are uh, interesting, and in particular, first of all, we validated the definition of polarized signals in the Monte Carlo, uh, which is phantom Monte Carlo in this case, um, against the analytic results, as I uh, told you before, and we found very good agreement, uh, below 1% agreement for uh, all the observables or the distributions. Uh, we investigated, of course, the effect of lepton cuts on the, um, uh, mo uh, on the relevant observables, uh, which are, for example, the uh, cosine theta of the lepton uh, in, in the um, corresponding boson rest frame. And uh, we checked that the interferences, uh, which are expected to be non-vanishing, they don't vanish, but they are small. Um, However, uh, given the fact that many computations and many predictions uh, also at the experimental level uh, rely on the fact that in these interferences are negligible, uh, I want to stress that these uh, interferences can be not negligible in some regions of the phase space. So they should definitely um, be uh, included in any uh, realistic setup uh, of uh, uh, experimental analysis. Uh, we also uh, go, uh, went further, um, we investigated the model independence, uh, which uh, there seemed to be uh, in, uh, um, when comparing different models, in particular we simulated DBS in the standard model, in a singlet extension of it, and in a strongly coupled Higgsless standard model, and we found out that uh, the transverse distributions, so the differential distribution for certain observables, uh, for transversely polarized vector bosons show an almost model independence both in the shape and in the cross sections, which is uh, very promising in the light of a model independent extraction of polarization information directly from the data at the RHC without a priori um, knowledge of the uh, underlying dynamics. Um, we also checked that um, the reweighting method, which is often used by experimentalists to um, to simulate polarized uh, events is not accurate uh, and is not accurate, unfortunately, exactly in those regions of phase space which are mostly interesting for uh, VBS, which is, for example, large invariant mass of the system of the proposal. So I hope I convinced that in VBS we have a, a stable uh, definition of polarized signals, uh, which we validated a lot and we found out uh, interesting results. Um, we went uh, beyond, uh, and uh, since I'm here in Würzburg, I'm working on the extension of these tools we uh, implemented in Phantom for VBS to NLOQCD. And we um, have found, uh, we have investigate, investigated mostly uh, diboson production, and in particular W plus, W minus production uh, in the fully leptonic uh, channel. Uh, combining to the NLOQCD predictions, also the loop induced uh, prediction which come from uh, uh, a channel which is blue on blue on, uh, which in principle uh, uh, should be a next to next to link order contribution to the full computation, but uh, is interesting uh, as a separate channel because it is announced by the blue on PDF. Um, I don't want to go into the details, but uh, we targeted our investigation on the stability of pre polarized predictions against analog QCD corrections, and we found out that for singly polarized predictions, so only one boson is polarized, the analog QCD corrections are similar to the unpolarized case, and the polarization fractions are very stable against these corrections. However, uh, there is some news, and the W longitudinal, which is the most interesting signal, of course, um, features uh, a really large uh, relative correction coming from an LOQCD um, 
relative corrections, despite the imposing of a jet veto on the final state. Uh, the other good news is that polarization fractions are stable against scale variations, which is very good from the point of view of having uh, accurate predictions uh, from the theoretical side. Uh, we investigated both total cross-sections and also distributions, and we found out that there are some angular distributions which are not so suited for polarization measurement uh, due to large interferences, also in the absence of lepton cuts. Uh, and there are also some distributions which are not well described by the double pole approximation already in the unpolarized uh, case. However, there are, there are several uh, observables uh, at the LHC which can be used uh, um, in order to uh, disentangle polarizations uh, from, uh, uh, from the data. Um, I, this leads me to my um, conclusions. Um, I hope I convinced you that uh, there is um, much interest both in the experimental community, community and therefore also in the theoretical community to investigate on um, uh, polarization of weak bosons. Uh, at the moment, the focus is on diboson, so boson pair production and vector boson scattering. Uh, but uh, it, is, it will be, of course, uh, urgent to investigate polarization of W and Z bosons also uh, in other uh, processes uh, at the LHC. Um, yeah, as a phenomenolo phenomenology, which leads here, I report, for example, the further investigation of the model independence of the polarized signals, which is to me very interesting because we didn't expect it before. And so it will be uh, nice to investigate the polarization signals in the presence of some specific UV, uh, uh, um, uh, UV complete BSM dynamics or in an EFT uh, framework. Uh, but from the point of view of theory, it is uh, really important to define accurately uh, these signals because uh, uh, one could do very, uh, could infer a very wrong uh, statement if uh, he, he or she doesn't um, include interferences and evaluate non-resonant effects, we should be definitely considered in order to uh, give reasonable theoretical predictions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Giovanni, for uh, this presentation. Are there any questions or comments? So I have one question. Uh, do Please. you hear me? Yeah, so yes. th this uh, model independence, so does this mean that these models cannot be detected using this, uh, this kind of signal? Does this mean, do I understand uh, correctly? Uh, well, um, not exactly, because what is a model uh, independent, uh, to a certain extent, uh, not, not uh, in general uh, uh, for all uh, observables, but for some observables and for these three models, uh, only the transverse polarization seems to be model independent. And this is what is uh, um, interesting. Uh, it's um, almost model independence, both in the shape of the distributions and uh, in the cross section. On the contrary, the longitudinal contributions uh, are um, kind of model independent uh, only concerning the shape because if one consider for example the no higgs uh, standard model so a higgs less standard models um, the longitudinal uh, contribution will grow uh, uh, very badly in the larger high energy uh, regime while the standard model is regularized in the high energy mm -hmm. regime uh, so this is what uh, what is it is promising uh, the idea that um, if the transverse um, polarization is model independent, one could subtract from the data the transverse contribution and infer in a model independent way the longitudinal without okay. a priori knowledge of the, uh, of the specific uh, realization of the EWSB. Okay. 